the low salutations what to do it's the dr gamer all father the do-rag gang you know the vibes like and subscribe let's get it hey hey what it do make the like button blue sub if you knew hey what it do make the like button blue sub if you knew so you know how players are complaining about the developers at crystal dynamics not communicating enough and being really vague and giving corporate answers. Well, it turns out maybe that was a good thing <laughs> because be careful what you wish for. You might get it and got it. We did. So look, yesterday we got Rowan Belden Clifford. Who is this guy? He is one of the elusive developers at Crystal Dynamics. As you see, he is the lead level designer at Crystal Dynamics. So you have him to thank for those wonderful hallways that we're always fighting in. Now, yesterday, he went on a bit of a tweet storm after seemingly being fed up with <laughs> with all the stuff he was seeing online. And I think personally, this was overall a really bad look. So for context, this came right after a developer stream that was supposed to expand on the lackluster roadmap. And a lot of people, I was seeing a lot of this in the chat, were understandably disappointed with the dev stream because they essentially spent an hour responding to everyone's questions with soon. We can't talk about that. Maybe in the future. And then on top of that, there was the revelation for a lot of people that weren't aware of this, that essentially Crystal Dynamics does not have the team right now or the resources to handle more than one thing at a time. They actually they basically have everyone working on this claw raid and Spider-Man. And that's pretty much it. So then Rowan takes to Twitter <laughs> and shares his thoughts on a variety of topics. <laughs> and it was quite interesting. So he starts off with a uh, breaking game entirely focused on one single hero has more time to spend on that one hero, then game focus on a whole cast of heroes. Not usually one for sarcastic subtweeting, but you do it so well. But this takes me straight into the sun. It's been like two and a half years of this. So for those that missed this very unsubtle tweet, he is referring to the fact that people are praising the quality that Insomniac Games have been producing. Not only did they drop Miles Morales, one of the best games of 2020, right after they dropped Ratchet and Clank, one of the best games of 2021. And then this past week, we find out that they've been also developing a sequel to PS4's Marvel Spider-Man that will feature Venom and a standalone Wolverine game. So people were understandably very excited and bringing up the fact that, hey, why is Insomniac Games consistently putting out all this crazy high quality content and Marvel's Avengers is seemingly having a hard time with very basic stuff. So his response is that, so his response to that is, oh, it's easy for you to say they're only focused on one hero. So this is the so this is kind of the whole multiplayer versus single player argument, which obviously on a basic level, it is harder to make a single player game than a multiplayer live service game. But this is a pretty disingenuous straw man that Rowan is doing right now. Yes, technically it's harder to make a 
Thanksgiving turkey than a cheeseburger. But if the cheeseburger is cooked to perfection, made with high quality, homemade ingredients, and the turkey is undercooked, covered in salt, and smells like it's been out in the sun too long, it's pretty fair <laughs> to say, hey, the cook over here did a great job. What happened over here with the turkey? <laughs> like, it doesn't matter the complexity. The point that people are bringing up is the quality. But he goes on. The problem with attempting to drive her on the core fantasy of the Avengers is that by definition needs to either be a single game with at minimum the core four Avengers playable. We did two more just for giggles or it needs to be at minimum four different games focusing on a single hero and then a fifth to combine them together, meaning you still only get four playable heroes at launch. Would you like an Avengers game after three years or after 15? I mean, if it would, if they would have taken the extra 10 years because <laughs> this game was announced five years ago, maybe, <laughs> I mean, based on, based on what we got, but of course, this is another disingenuous argument. He's being silly at this point, but it gets it gets worse. This isn't to mention that an Avengers game without co-op doesn't deliver on the core of fantasy either, meaning you automatically hamstring yourself in your ability to focus all of your efforts on the type of high fidelity narrative gameplay that other games are known for. Anyway, all I'm saying is Marvel's Avengers was an impossible feat. The fact is this is all is a treasure and the fact that each of the heroes actually feels like that hero when you're playing them and that we made a killer introduction to Kamal Khan in the process. Okay, so that's a little alarming if you're if you're if you're a fan of the game and you're concerned of the future to hear a dev a lead at that essentially dismissing everyone's criticisms about the game and just chalking all the game's problems up to the fact that, oh, this was impossible to do. No, it wasn't. Shout out, first of all, to Vince Napoli for making the heroes feel like the heroes. He, he is the real MVP of this game. He did a phenomenal job with the combat. But the thing is, this was not an impossible feat. What they attempted to make was a live service multiplayer looter that happened to feature Marvel characters. This is not the first game in that genre. It's not the last game in that genre. And there are plenty of games that have pulled off the multiplayer looter element a hundred times better than this game has managed to do. There are other, there have been other hero games that fans have loved that feature a wide variety of Marvel characters. I hear all the time people bringing up how they miss Ultimate Alliance, Marvel Heroes, even though Future Revolution is pay to win trash, the people who aren't spending money on the game comp compliment it on how fun it is when you're obviously not playing PvP or engaging in the, in the pay to win elements of it and how it feels like a Marvel game. This was not an impossible task. They just did it very poorly. They got a lot of things right, which is what is so frustrating and why you have people still sticking around on the off chance that it gets better. They they delivered the hardest part. They introduced multiple Avengers in one game. It was multiplayer and they absolutely nailed the combat for those heroes. The problems people have around the game are all the other stuff. The fact that the game is lacking basic features after being out for now over a year. You have a marketplace that sells $5 emotes when there's no emote wheel in the game. You have a multiplayer looter with no end game farmable content, no ability to modify your gear in any way. You, you have 
you have a multiplayer game with no join in progress where people are constantly crashing out of their missions and having to start the whole thing over. I've been showing this every stream, every week, every time I try to play the Omega level threat, I crash and that's the end of it. it hasn't been fixed still. And the OLT came out in July and not to mention enemies spawning under the map. There's, you know, you know, the issues, the game, the game has a wide variety of issues and it's not conceptual though. Probably they shouldn't have opted to make this a multiplayer looter if they weren't going to have a team specifically well versed in that genre working on it in the first place. And there have also been complaints that they use the foundation engine instead of Unreal, which is what the Tomb Raider games, which they're familiar with, runs on. But outside of that, if the game fixed the main things that people have been having issues with, like I'm talking about, you look at the most well-reasoned critiques about the game that have been made by content creators, journalists alike, this will be a game of the year contender. And it's not impossible. That's, that's the thing. And the, and for him to dismiss this as impossible and all these complaints aren't map don't matter kind of gives us an insight into the studio and why we have the game it, that we have and why it doesn't seemingly get, really get better. If people are thinking like Rowan at Crystal Dynamics, then what a lot of people suspect is right. They understand the feedback. They just think they they just think we're wrong and or they're looking at the wrong feedback because I'm having a hard time believing this guy actually sat down and listen to all the good faith critiques about the game and walked away with this and it get, and you'll see in a minute because this this one is pretty egregious so you have this guy respond the problem was not the gameplay the problem was the greed and disregard for fans the problem was seeing fans as cash sponges to squeeze not as a customer to please as long as you don't see that you'll keep failing so understandable complaint. People have had some issues with the way the marketplace is handled. Now, I don't think that's the main issue with the game. I disagree with that, though it is a problem. But he goes on. I'm so sorry that fans don't like free new heroes in operations forever. I mean, pump your brakes, buddy. This game is not going to be putting out free heroes in operations forever. They'll be lucky if they make it through 2022. What a bummer they feel so squeezed with barely anything in a game behind a paywall and nothing randomized like loot boxes. As long as you keep seeing devs as the enemy, you will always be unhappy. So once again, we have a, quite frankly, bad faith take. He could have used this opportunity to build a bridge to understand what this player was feeling, why him and a lot of others feel disregarded instead of commenting on that. He just sarcastically dismissed what this player was feeling like, oh, but you get free DLCs. What, what do you have to complain about? I don't know. Let off the top of my head, uh, six dollar takedowns, nerfing XP gains just so you can sell consumables to boost XP, the fact that you were selling really ugly $14 recolors, <laughs> to be fair. Now, instead of paying $14 for these ugly recolors, like the latest set, which are the Cosmic Glow outfits, you can buy them individually for $7 or get all of them for $30 with a consumable included, of course. That's the sort of thing <laughs> that people are having trouble with. It's not that it's not that people don't understand the need for this game to monetize. It is a live service game We're we're mostly adults. We understand the the problem people have for the most part with the marketplace is not the fact that you're charging for things. 
is the fact that the quality is not up to par with other games in the genre. I have no problem spending money for MCU Thor. I was thrilled when I saw the MCU Thor cosmetic and I was happy to spend money on it. What I don't like is spending $14 on a premium MCU skin for Thor and then getting in the game and having his cape fly through his body and gets and gets stuck all over the place. Which I what I don't like is spending $14 on a premium Iron Man skin and having weird green dots <laughs> show up. <laughs> what I what people and what other people don't like is wanting comic book accurate skins and getting this gamma stuff <laughs> instead. You know? It's not it's not that they don't want to spend money, is that they want to spend money on quality. Like look no further than Future Revolution. Yes, scummy practices, but high quality skins. Insomniac Spider-Man, high quality skins. That's all people that's all people are asking for. They want good skins that work when they're in game and will happily give you money for them. But the fact that consistently you put stuff in the marketplace for money that that either is ugly or it's good, but doesn't work properly. Case in point, the latest takedowns, they just dropped brand new takedowns for Black Widow, Iron Man and Black Panther. The takedowns look really cool in the preview when you get them in the actual game. They're buggy and broken. <laughs> now, the Thor example, that's been a problem since Thor came out in August and they released a patch, which they said specifically was going to fix that cape issue. It's still not fixed. So yeah, fans do feel cheated. Why wouldn't, how, how could you not feel cheated if you spent money on a product that didn't, that was not as advertised and then when you heard they were fixing said product, you boot, you boot up the game and it's still not working. <laughs> it doesn't matter if your content is free, by the way, if it's low quality, like don't, don't act like you're putting out this insomniac level greatness for free. We're almost going to be two years into the game's existence and cloning labs is still not in the game. Like to put that in perspective, in the time since cloning labs has been announced, Insomniac has released two games, Miles Morales, Ratchet and Clank, and they've announced, provided trailers for, and have been actively developing two more, a Marvel Spider-Man sequel and a standalone Wolverine game. And Cloning Labs looks like it's not is once again delayed until at the very earliest next year. Even the insiders have no idea what's going on with Cloning Labs. So this sarcastically responding like, oh, why aren't you satisfied with the free content is really dismissive, really insulting and is and unfortunately, I think this is a mindset that a lot of devs have. They think that we see them as the enemy, but based on this guy's tweet, it looks like he sees us as the enemy. And that's unfortunately why a lot of gaming ends up being toxic in the community. This community in Marvel's Avengers in particular is quite divided. You have devs like Rowan who think everything they're doing is awesome and these ungrateful gamers just can't stop complaining about the wonderful free stuff they've been given, like recycled events, like the cosmic threat in Corrupted Vibranium, which they had the nerve to put on the roadmap as if they were new. And then you have people who are diehard fans of the game, who just, who really wanted to do well, who will defend them no matter what, and in some cases, shoot down any constructive criticism towards the game. And then you have, as a backlash, people who spend all their time 
just dumping on the game and and the players that that still support it because some of them feel like they have to because no one else is going to is going to be honest with them because of all the discouragement of actual discourse. Now, what I think would have been very helpful, especially after the dev stream that we got yesterday was if Rowan had just took to Twitter and said, look guys, I understand there's a lot of frustration with the game and I want to just have it out. Let's have a discussion about it. Let's have a respectful discussion about it. I want to hear what you think we did wrong, how we can make it better. And I can kind of explain things from the developer's perspective and hopefully we can have a productive dialogue and have things be better between us and the community going forward. Instead, you have all this sarcastic grandstanding and dismissing players who have very valid criticisms about the game. And I don't think this is going to earn Crystal Dynamics any favors. And they definitely need some because they really have a poor reputation right now. And it's really a shame because I would have loved if we got an honest conversation from a dev. We get the dev streams every week, but it's the same stuff. That's not a real dialogue. That's just essentially the PR wing of Crystal Dynamics delivering pre-made talking points about about the game and updates and players are understandably frustrated of consistently hearing essentially nothing about the game of of note. But instead you have a dev here that comes in and instead of building a bridge, he just goes on the offensive, getting the quick likes from people that already agree with him instead of working to build a bridge between the players that are frustrated, but still enjoy the game. I understand not wanting to deal with the people who are obviously acting in bad faith. We know exactly who those people are, but there are a lot of people who aren't sucking up to the game every day, who aren't constantly praising the devs that have, while they enjoy the game, like me and a lot of my followers have very real and valid concerns about how the game has been handled. And I think it's just a shame that Rowan did not take advantage of the opportunity that Twitter gave him to build a bridge with some of the more frustrated members of the fan base. Hopefully this video is taken as a teachable moment and not as an attack on the devs because what I would like is for the game to do well and keep growing and for the people in this community to have a better relationship with Crystal Dynamics. And I think it would really help Crystal Dynamics if they could just have a real and honest discussion with the players instead of either this corporate speak we get in the dev stream or this bad faith rant that we got here from Rowan on Twitter. I feel like there's definitely a middle ground here where where people where every both sides can have their voices heard and we can find some common ground and get better moving forward. But I'm concerned that people will just dismiss this video as oh he's just a hater or whatever. Don't listen don't listen to him because that sort of thinking is what is actively hurting the game. And as a fan of Marvel's Avengers, I really don't enjoy that and wish things would be a lot better. Sound off in the comments below. What do you think about Rowan? Do you think he was right? Do you think people are overreacting about the game? What I want is to have people give their thoughts, but don't be, but don't do it in a bad faith way. Yes, understand that you may like the game, and but there are a lot of people who have very valid issues with the game. So I want people to be able to express that without 
feeling like everyone's under attack. So if y'all can do that in the comment section online, I would greatly appreciate that. And I think it would make this community a lot closer. I'm Sadat the Gamer, signing off.